Prepare to be afraid. The skull-faced space marines are here to make you run away just a little bit more. Let's take a look at the Primaris Reavers. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the Game Focus 40k channel, where we've been going through the new Space Marine Codex unit by unit. I believe the Primaris Reavers are the last standard Primaris infantry unit that we haven't covered, so let's take a look at what's changed for them in the new book. In the background, the Reavers are the special operatives and terror troops of the Primaris Space Marines. They're often deployed behind enemy lines, either by grav chutes or infiltrating with their grapnel launchers, and they're often used to sow terror and disorder among an undisciplined enemy. Presumably people are going to be a lot more terrified of a space marine if they're wearing a skull mask and trying to kill you, other than if they're just wearing normal helmets and trying to kill you. But let's have a look at how these guys do on the battlefield. So Reavers are an elite choice for Codex Space Marines. They're Phobos armoured, so they have some synergies with the Phobos Librarian's Obscuration Discipline and the Phobos characters from Shadowspear. You buy them as a squad of five models, including one sergeant, and at base with no fancy equipment, they are 16 points per model. So are the cheapest Primaris variant out there at the moment, which is interesting seeing as they're an elite Primaris choice. As standard, they're equipped with a bolt carbine, a heavy bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades, and shot grenades. The bolt carbine is essentially an assault 2 bolter, so two 24 inch range shots, strength 4, AP nothing, damage 1. And the heavy bolt pistol is strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 1. Shot grenades are an interesting little option. They're a 6 inch grenade weapon, they fire D3 shots, and if the opponent is hit by the shot grenade, they're stunned till the end of your turn. They won't be able to fire overwatch against any unit charging against them, and they suffer minus one to hit in close combat. Bear in mind that you can only use this on infantry, however. So no stunning a repulse executioner with a shot grenade and then getting to charge it with no overwatch, for example. If you prefer to make the squad a little bit more geared up for close combat, you can trade their bolt carbine for a combat knife, and this doesn't cost any additional points, but it means that each of the squad will essentially just have one additional attack at the loss of those two shots at 24 inch range. Now I could see the point of this if you're playing something melee focused, say Blood Angels for example, or perhaps White Scars, but I think in most circumstances you're going to want those extra two bolt shots at 24 inch range rather than one additional strength for attacking close combat. It is interesting however that this gives you one of the options for a slightly more dedicated Primaris close combat unit, which we don't really have very many of at the moment. Now the entire squad can take a grav shoot or a grapnel launcher, or they can take both. Grav shoots are essentially allowing them to set up from reserve, so it's essentially paying 2 points per model to allow the squad to come in from reserve on turn 2 or turn 3, and they have to be outside 9 inches of enemy models. The other option, the grapnel launcher, is interesting. If you give the squad grapnel launchers, again for 2 points per model, you can put them in reserve, but they can only come in within 6 inches of the edge of the board, and again, outside 9 inches of enemy models. The grapple and all launchers do give them an additional rule, however, which means that when they move, they can ignore vertical distance, which can give them some crazy movement shenanigans, say being on top of a building and then moving down a very, very long distance to get very near to an enemy unit to charge them in the assault phase. The grapnel launcher only works in the movement phase, just to clarify, in terms of ignoring vertical distance. Now I think both of these are quite interesting options. If you don't normally have any way to put space marines in reserve in your army, obviously if you're playing raven guards then for one command point you could do a reserve move with something like aggressors or another hilariously destructive primaris infantry unit. But if you don't have the option then this gives you a way to deep strike some primaris bodies on an objective. I think the two options are fairly well balanced, the only thing is that the grapnel launchers are very dependent on terrain. If you don't have any big ruins for them to be pinging about all over, then you're just going to get more utility out of the grav shoots and being able to choose where you drop in. Out of the two, I'd probably take the grav shoots for this reason, even though the vertical move for the grapnel launchers is really fun and I really like the rule. Now the Reavers have a few additional special rules. They have Angels of Death which will give them an additional AP-1 to their Assault Bolt weapons when they're in the Tactical Doctrine, and buff them up in the Assault Doctrine too. Shock Assault, which is quite important for these guys, 
because they're going to be operating quite near the enemy line, so having three attacks on the charge is very nice. And Bolter Discipline doesn't really do anything for them because they don't have rapid fire weapons. If you bring ten of these, then they can combat squad down into two five-man squads. Though personally, I never bother bringing ten of these when you can just have two different squads with more sergeants in. Elite slots are fairly easy to come by normally. And finally, they have their own special rule called Terror Troops. For each Reaver squad within 3 inches of an enemy unit, you subtract 1 from the leadership, up to a maximum of minus 3. Now this is really quite an interesting rule, because most rules like this don't let you stack it with multiple squads applying the same effect to each squad. So in theory, you could envisage 3 units of Reavers absolutely scaring the crap out of an elite enemy unit that's taken some casualties and causing them to lose a load more models in the leadership phase. In reality, however, I think that this will be quite hard to pull off. The 3 inch range is really quite limiting, and essentially means that you're not ever going to get it on the turn that you drop in, unless you successfully make that 9 inch charge into close combat. Also, leadership shenanigans just don't really work against some armies, say for example, armies that are made of all vehicles, or armies like orcs, which tend to have leadership 30 because of big mobs being next to each other. Probably the best time that you could see this having effects would be if you manage to get a Reaver squad or two, charge into a whole load of guard infantry squads or something similar. Then if you inflict a few casualties on each squad, then you'll often get another model or two running. But even then I'd say that's only an extra nice thing to have, not exactly something that you can base your entire game's strategy around, as you might just have been better off positioning your Reavers better, say keeping them on an objective, or out of line of sight of a lot of the enemy's guns, rather than charging headlong into a whole bunch of enemy units, just to try and make them all leadership minus one. So on the whole, Reavers are a Primaris infantry unit that's a bit cheaper than Intercessors, but can be upgraded to have some additional mobility options, and will generally like to be so in Discord in an enemy's lines, ideally fighting some light infantry, as their weapons are a bit subpar against anything else. So let's have a look at any ways that we can use to buff these guys up, and get the most out of them on the tabletop. Firstly, Reavers benefit from most of the Space Marine chapter benefits in one way or another. Ultramarines fall back and shoot could be useful for the bulk carbines. White Scars, in particular, seem like a good choice for Reavers. They can get that stratagem that allows them to roll 3d6 and pick the two highest for charging out of Deep Strike. And once they've got into enemy lines, they can fall back and then charge another unit to give them a lot of flexibility. Iron Hands is always good for two wound models, as the 6-up Feel No Pain dramatically increases their survivability, particularly against damage 2 weapons, which are very nasty against these guys. Raven Guards will synergize well as well, as these guys will often want to be hugging cover, and hopefully activating that minus 1 to hit bonus for being greater than 12 inches away from enemy firing models. They also synergize well with the idea that Raven Guard want to be infiltrating a lot of units up the board and getting in the opponent's face turns 1 and 2. Salamanders don't have as amazing synergies with these, based on their chapter trait alone, but Imperial Fists and Crimson Fists will be good on the Bolt Carbine Reavers due to getting some extra Bolt Shots on 6s and either having a benefit against Hordes or ignoring cover. Black Templars, whose trait is often not particularly useful on Space Marine units, actually applies quite well to this squad, because they'll often be dropping in with grav shoots and then shooting and then trying to make a charge, and being able to fully re-roll that charge is quite a powerful thing for a 9 inch charge, so it definitely makes them a little bit more reliable in that regard. In terms of character support, I wouldn't typically tend to try and use characters to buff their damage output, as Reaver's damage output point for point is quite poor compared with heavier hitting units in the Space Marine army, such as say aggressors or hellblasters or any of the big tanks, so I'd advise saving your buffing characters for these guys. As I mentioned before however, the Phobos Librarian can use his powers on these, and you could have some fun with things like Temporal Corridor, to zoom a unit of Reavers all the way into the enemy deployment zone, or something like Shrouding to make them hard to target unless you're the closest unit to those Reavers. In terms of stratagems, Auspect Scan is generally worth considering. If any enemy units are coming in from reserve near a full squad of Space Marines, Gene Wrought Might for one command point could be useful on a close combat squad of Reavers, particularly as they're not the highest strength unit, so automatically scoring wounds on a 6 to hit is quite handy. Finally, Transhuman Physiology isn't a bad shout for Reavers either. If you absolutely need them to hold an objective, then it's worth considering. 
if your opponent is about to target them with a bunch of heavy weapons. So how do Reavers stack up against the other options that we have in the Space Marine Army? I'm going to be honest, personally I don't think that Reavers are worth including in a competitive Space Marine Army list when compared with some of our options such as Infiltrators, Incursors, Intercessors and Scouts. And the reason for this is almost purely because all of the other ones fill up troop slots so can be used to get command points at the same time as doing their job. I think if Reavers were troops then they would genuinely see some use compared with the other units because they do have their advantages. But for me personally the opportunity cost of not filling up those battalions and getting those command points is just too high for a unit that does something very similar to the troops units. That being said Reavers do have their own battlefield role that is distinct from the troops units. They're one point less than intercessors, making them the cheapest primaris bodies that you can buy, so they would stack up fairly well against bolt rifle intercessors if you just want something that's very durable, but a bit less damage output point for point, because they don't have the extra range or AP of the standard bolt rifle. Also, as we mentioned, they're the only primaris standard infantry type unit that has the option to come in from reserve, provided you pay the extra two points per model for that privilege. So they are certainly worth considering if you need a squad to drop down and hold an objective in the midfield. Particularly if you have a way of getting them a boosted charge to get them into the enemy lines and maybe take an objective from the enemy. I personally prefer to try and use things like scouts for this role and just start them up the board to start with. Or I'd probably use incursors if I wanted primaris bodies. But reavers certainly are a comparable option. If I were to run reavers I would run them generally as a 5 man squad. If there weren't any special circumstances that made me want to run them as a bigger one. Say for example if I was wanting to use the White Scar stratagem to get a longer charge for a big unit. Or I was thinking about buying them a Phobos Librarian to temporal corridor them up into the enemy's lines. I generally run them as a 5 man unit because you get the extra sergeant that way. And if you want additional reavers then you can just buy multiple 5 man units. If I was using them in say a tournament and I didn't know what I'd be facing. I would pay the additional 2 points to equip them with grav shoots to give them full flexibility to come down on an objective or to shore up a part of the battlefield with no restrictions as to having to set up near the board edge. I'd personally choose to equip them with bolt carbines so they'd drop down, hopefully chew up some light infantry with those bolt carbines and then try and charge in and see if they can get lucky by rolling a 9 or more. From there they'd try and tie up important units bully light infantry or hold objectives and just try and make them generally annoying so the opponent can't just ignore them and focus on more dangerous hard hitting units back in my backfield line. All in all I think that Reavers aren't a particularly competitive option for Codex Space Marines, not necessarily because they're any worse than the other troops that you'd compare them to, but just because they have an elite slot rather than a troop slot and therefore you can't use them to fill up those all important battalions to get you a bunch of command points which you need for all the fond stratagems that you're using in Codex Space Marines these days. That being said they are definitely a fun unit to use particularly when you're using them with the grapnel hooks and I'd see absolutely nothing wrong with experimenting with them in a more casual setting and I'm sure in some games they'll do absolute wonders. I just wouldn't personally recommend bringing them to a tournament in all honesty. If you disagree with anything that I've said or feel like I've underestimated these Reavers then please let me know down in the comments. I'm fairly sure that a lot of you will have had some good success with them and I look forward to hearing about it if you have. And as usual if I've got any rules wrong please let me know. Thanks very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more Space Marine content or over the next couple of weeks in particular a lot of Imperial Knight content too. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.